Welcome to the training guide for the Half Returns Portal. Um, just going to talk you through the process. Um, we will be sending you an email with details of how to access the Returns Portal. Uh, first of all, you will need to log into your Nottinghamshire County Council self account that you will have created previously. So just make sure that you log into the account um, first of all, and then you will be taken to the online returns portal screen. We will be sending providers an email with a unique company ID reference. So once you've logged into your self account, you will need the company ID to access the returns portal. OK, so I'm just going to use a test uh, record for the purpose of the training. And if you put, pop your ID in, click on the check button, it will return information if we can find your account. If there is any issues and we're unable to locate the company ID, there is instructions and a an, uh, contact number and email address for assistance. So once you've logged in, click next. What you've got here is um, a company self-serve portal. So any dates that we already know about, any venues that your uh, provision has attended over the October holidays will be pre-populated into the database. So the, the beauty of this is that you will have information already on the system, saving you time and meaning that you won't need to pre-populate and add information. So first of all, you need to click on the refresh and view dates button. And if there is anything that we already know about, it will populate below. So click refresh. So this is the test account. We've put quite a few through just to show you. Um, but basically what you have here is the provider name, the venue and the date of the activities. So, for example, for NCC test, we've got venue one test. That's having two dates, so the 24th and the 25th. We've got another venue here, venue two test, which has just got one date. So, depending on how many venues that you've got and how many dates, all of that information will show on this first panel here. If you can't find a date or you've needed to... Um, add one at the last moment, then you can manually add a date at this point and then it will populate into the table below. To do that, you just click on the add date button, add a venue name, and then just complete the relevant fields. So what was the age from and age to, and what date was the um, event on and the start time. and the end time. Okay. And how many slots did you have available? And then just a description of um, what the provision was on the day. So click add date. And then refresh view dates. And as you can see, it's added my new date at the bottom. OK, so what I'm going to show you now is actually clicking into each venue and the date and then adding um, the attendance register. So we're going to click on um, event test one to start off with. Um, and I'm going to click on the 24th. And what that will do is it will just load the details of the attendance register. So it just confirms the provider name and the venue and the date that you're completing the register for. And if you start typing the child's name um, into the form, so first name and surname and the child's date of birth. OK, 
okay. Now, if it's a child that has already tendered a previous provision, um, or if we know that the child is eligible for free school meals, it will pre-populate and return the data automatically for you. If it is a child that we don't know about, then you will be able to enter the data manually, which is what I'm going to show you first of all how to do from here. Okay, so I'm just gonna choose the name of the school and then the postcode of the child. And then are they eligible for free school meals? Is the special education needs? Is the child from a Ukrainian refugee family? Did they pay to attend the session? And then did they attend or not attend the session? So I'm going to say attended. For each one, you just need to click the button confirm attendance. And then if you need to add more children, add next child. So I'm just going to go back up to the top now and enter a second child. And the date of birth. OK, so you can see for this child, it's showing that this child is eligible for free school meals and they've previously attended one of the sessions. So we already know their information. So as you can see, it pre-populates all of that information below. All you need to do for this child is say whether they attended or didn't attend. And then click confirm attendance again. And what you'll see is it then starts to build your attendance record here. So you keep repeating the process until you've added all of the children that attended that session. Once you've finished, you can just click, I have finished adding names for this register. Okay. And we're going to close this register because we've finished adding all of the names for this register. And save changes. So what you can see now, back on this table, it's now got a status as completed. So that's telling me that I've submitted all of the information on the attendance register for the 24th against venue test one. So I'm now going to repeat the process for the second day, the 25th. Okay, so it's just loading the information. Because it's live data, it may just take a few seconds for the data just to refresh. So just bear with it while you're putting information through. So I'm just going to repeat the process again, just to submit this one. Okay, so this child isn't previously known, so I'm just going to add details in, not eligible, no special educational needs, not from a Ukrainian family, didn't pay to attend, this child attended. Okay, so we're going to add the next child. So I'm just going to use the example again, um, Logan. just to show you again that it pre-populates if we do know about them from before. And for this session, I'm just gonna say this child didn't attend just to show the difference. So I've finished adding the names for this register. And because we only had two dates available for venue one, and we've completed both of them, we now need to close this register and open the spend return. So once you've completed all of the dates for a specific venue, you then need to go to the funding spend and just um, advise around the actual spends um, for that venue. So I'm going to click on this button. So after you've pressed save changes, you'll return back to the main screen and to submit the spend, you just need to click on the next button. And then all of the venues that you've previously completed will be shown in the table here. So we've just got some examples just to show you. So I'm going to click on the venue one test, which is the one that we did earlier. And we just need to work our way through answering these questions around the spend. 
So these are just test um, records at the moment, so won't necessarily relate to actual money um, and spend that you would usually make. So stated spend amount. So it will pull through if we know if we had the amount that you were due to spend uh, when you submitted your application. So if you could then just say how much you did actually spend across um, the October holidays or any future holidays for that particular venue. OK, and then just work your way through each question, um, adding in the individual amounts for each one. So for the holiday club provision, provider cost, staff, venue, food, meal, um, if you could include the amount here. Um, similarly, around publicising the scheme, how much uh, spend related to that. Capital expenditure, management and administration of the programme. And then any other costs that you occurred um, along the way. And then which district um, did this particular venue uh, cover? And then what you'll see below is just a summary of all of the information that you've provided. Um, so how many attendees, which district, the funding that was requested and your actual spend. So just as a brief summary and an overview, um, if you do need to go back and just amend anything before you confirm it, you can do. So once you're happy, confirm the return. And you'll see that it says return complete and update record. OK, so then the beauty of this form is that it's live data. So you don't need to use any pre save um, the save function that you've used before on previous applications. The information that you input into each section will save because it's live data. So as soon as you submit a particular point, when you log back on, the information will save. And then if you need to go back and add any other information, add any other dates for different venues, you can just repeat the process to attend um, the register and click next again for the funding amount. OK, thank you for watching.